Hello guys, welcome to Expertise Academy. So today we're going to see alignment uh, customization. So today we're going to see how to customize alignment labels. So that is one of the things we're going to see. So this logic of customizing labels is will apply to other label sections that you're looking at as well. So if you're looking at uh, profile labels, section labels, a lot of those things, the concept is similar. So let's get into alignment. So first, um, you can continue from the previous exercise on how to create an alignment. And then once you got an alignment, uh, you can select the alignment. So that gives you the toolbars on the top and uh, you can go into the alignment properties or you can edit the style. So this will actually edit the alignment style, but not the label style. So if we go up here to the alignment properties, just like how we did with the other things, let's say point styles, which has got the label styles within that, you will not see the, see the label styles here. So you will not be able to customize the labels right from here. So how do we customize the labels? So now zoom in closer, make sure that you deselect everything else and then select your label. So once you select your label, you get the tools, a different set of tools on the header and that would have something called edit label group. So there is also a whole bunch of other things that you can edit. One is the edit label text, which will edit this particular text. So you can change it to your own custom text or a different code uh, that you can insert it to that particular label. And another one is clear label text. You can clear the label text altogether. And uh, another one is flip the label text. So it goes to the other side. So you can flip it and then reverse that label text. So this will actually reverse it um, to the other direction. So for some reason. OK, for some reason it doesn't work. Um, so reverse label text, reverse label direction components. Oh, OK, so it just reverses the direction of it. Um, so next one is the uh, toggle label pin so that we have already seen it. So when you drag your labels, uh, you can actually toggle it so that when you move your alignment, the label sticks into that location. So that is your uh, toggle label pin. If you want to reset it, just right click uh, and then reset or go here and click on reset label group and that would reset the entire label group. All right. So let's get into label group, select your label and go to edit label group. And then you get your label group here. So it tells you the name of the alignment and then the type of labels that you've already added. So this is all the labels that we have already added. So one is the major station, minor station, geometry point, super elevation. So and then this is the style for each of those labels that we have added. So and then the increment. So now let's say we got major stations, uh, which has got the prep and the tick and the minor station just got the tick. And uh, so that's the increment for each of them. And uh, so now one thing you have to remember is when people adding major station and minor station, you see this little indentation. You need to see that if you don't see that indentation before the minor station and what happens is your minor station doesn't uh, see the major station. So that means at let's say this is at the increment of every 10 meters. So let's say 10, 20, 30, 40. And then when it reaches 50, they both going to be on overlapping on top of each other. So we don't want that happening. So make sure that you see this indentation. So to avoid that, sometimes what happens is people tend to forget this is the label type and uh, that they're going to add new labels into the uh, group. And if you add another major station, they're going to be on top of each other. So that is one of the things. All right. So now let's quickly get into this and then try to customize and understand what this window is offering. So first one is here. You can choose a label type and then the styles under that particular label type and you can customize it and you can add it to your label group. So that is first thing. And then this one is you can select it and you can delete the label from the label group. And then the station increment. So this is the label increment. This is how much the label is going to increment at uh, along the alignment. So this is actually the increment uh, of the stations uh, on the on the label. So this is pretty much your chain ages. and then your starting chain age and your ending chain age. And um, so then you got your uh, geometry points. If you added a geometry points, you can choose what all the geometry points you wanted to show on your alignment. OK, so another thing we have here is one is the import label set. Another one is a save label set. So now this label set you might have configured with lots and lots of different details into it. You can save the whole set as as uh, as one of your custom label set and you can import it and you can use it. Um, whenever you got a project that's, that's aligned with that. OK, so now what we do is we'll actually go and see how to add all of these manually starting from scratch. So it's a clean slate now. So now we're going to add major station first. I'm going to choose one uh, which says ends at prep with tick and then got three precision to it. 
Uh, so I'm going to add it. So that's my major station and that's the style which I'm going to have it for the major station. So I'm going to hit apply, hit OK and you can see that's my major station, how it's going to look like. Select it, go back to the edit group. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add minor station, choose a type as minor and then the type I'm going to say this is not going to have any precisions but I will have a text because the previous one was just a tick and this one I will have tick and text. So add it and increment is every five meters and then click apply and OK. So you got the minor stations now. So let's head back again and this time I want to add geometry points and then I'm going to say um, standard add and then I can choose all of them and then click on add and that's added. OK, so now these three things are added. You can also add super elevation points, directions, uh, all the other things as well. Design speed, a lot of these things as well. Uh, design speed, I'll show you when we actually get into the design criteria a bit more in detail. I'll show you how to add design speeds and then, you know, customize it and things like that. All right, so now let's see how to customize these styles here. So now uh, if you want to edit your label styles, you see a little button here. You have to click on it and then it shows a drop down where you can go and change your label style. And uh, obviously the same thing that we're going to do uh, is like copy current selection. Don't edit the default one. So I'm going to copy current selection and I'm going to give it a name. Let's say EXP for expertizer. Uh, okay. Okay. And then uh, just my initial. So I know that I'm the one who messed it up. And now we are going into the general tab. So the general tab, you can configure the overall settings for the label. So first is the textile. As I already said, the textile, uh, you can click on this ellipsis button to change to different textile. So when you're actually creating a civil 3D template, which we will go as a, as a sort of like some of the final chapters going in depth. So what you do is you create three or four textiles and use the same three, four textiles throughout the template, such as tables, legends, labels all the sections wherever you see them just use those three four textiles one is a heading title standard and probably another one is a subheading or something so just use those styles across the template don't use any of the styles the reason is let's say if you got a project and the client is not happy with the text style let's say the font style or the size of the font anything you can go and update it in the textile it will update the entire drawing you don't have to worry about it and then uh, we got the label visibility, which is set to true. If you turn it to, to off, the label will not be seen on the screen. So, so that's how it's going to be. So obvious, we don't need that to happen. And then uh, we can put this uh, text into a layer. So if you go and change the layer color, uh, if you set all the settings to by layer, it will update it. And then the layout. Uh, so the layout has got two components here. So one is the tick, another one is the uh, major station. So so that's a station value actually so it shouldn't be major station uh, it's just a station value um, so now we can set the visibility to true here for that particular component and then the anchor point which is a uh, feature or the tick so you can choose a tick and then you can specify which way you want to specify and the, and the offsets and things like that and then the anchor point will be anchor station and uh, that will be the location of the station and then uh, the content you click on this little ellipsis button here, which will take into your content editor. So I'm just going to get rid of this and then I'm going to show you how to add it. So there is two tabs here. So first one is the format and another one is your um, your properties. So the format is basically uh, you choose what type of textile you want to choose it, which automatically comes from the general tab. And then the justification, the type of justification is left, right, center, and then uh, the font. And the color and uh, my suggestion is you can leave these ones to the default and control it from the textile so it's much easier and then the color you can set it to by layer or by block so that whatever the color that comes from the layer is what you would see so for now um, let's first insert the property so there is a whole bunch of properties that we can insert so this is basically a code which will go to the actual object and then it would get the actual value of that uh, property and then it shows onto the label so that's what this this property value does so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose station value and then I'm going to choose a lot of different things unit decimal precision values a lot of these values you can add it I'm going to say zero precision so is it um, so we are editing the major station so I'm going to put it uh, with let's say just 0.1 precision just for the sake of this argument because it's a whole number anyway this precision is not going to make a much of a difference uh, let's add it up 
and then we got the code here so as i said remember don't edit anything within these brackets if you edit it the code will not work so it will tell you the station value the precision is two and then right aligned and all these things whatever the value that you have set we just puts up the fills up the code and now we can choose the format and then you can choose the color for it i'm going to say it's going to be in yellow um so the code is yellow so now as you can see that's how the code is going to look like then what i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to scroll down there is few other things that you can add flip it on the other side a lot of these things you can add and i'm going to choose the border visibility to true and uh, make it rectangular uh, round, rounded rectangular so that's how it's going to be and i can change the color of this one so i'm going to say this is going to be uh, in gray color so just for the sake of the exercise we're just changing colors and uh, so then what i'm going to do is you see this tick sign here i want it on both sides just like a sign a line which goes from like that so i'm going to choose tick and there is two ways you can do it you can add another tick and you can put it onto the other side or make this tick bigger and move it to the center so there is two ways you can accomplish the same thing so i'm going to through the second step because the first step is pretty much you can add a uh, another tick here so remember another thing also in civil 3d there is two objects one is a line another one is a tick so the um, even with the civil 3d default styles they have used line as an object as you can see this one um, is actually a line object if i try to add a tick you can see it's only got few features whereas if i add a line it has got whole bunch of features so that's why even in civil 3d default style they have not used tick style uh, they named it as tick but it's actually a line um, so then uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to choose this first option which is tick the component and then i'm going to make this length to be um, four so it's bigger as you can see it has grown from zero to four and now I'm going to move this in the middle. So the way I'm going to do it is I got two offset here. One is the X offset, which is from the X axis. It moves up and down. Another one is the Y offset. So the Y offset value, I'm going to say it's going to be minus two. And then it moves to the middle. And um, so simple as that. And then you can change the tick color as well. So I'm going to change this to, uh, let's say, blue. And uh, then the major station, the boxes, I'm going to change to blue. Yep. And then I can even make the tick bigger so it reaches that one. So I say if I want to do that tick, I think probably I'll have to make it as six. And uh, then we'll just make this one as minus three because the offset distance is actually three. So it just goes there and touches the uh, rounded edges. OK, so that's um, that's the first thing. And the second thing is um, you can set the object orders as well so which one goes above and bottom and things like because some of the text you can also add masking so if you add it on top bottom so it makes the change it uh, it affects it and uh, similarly you can add uh, copy a component and then you can make changes that you want it uh, which makes it easier and then uh, we got um, the drag state so the drag state is um, um, so when the labels are dragged you can apply a whole bunch of different settings to it so that would be goes for the header size and for the arrows and uh, the display text how you want it the border whether it's a rounded rectangle or rectangular so the border visibility you want to turn it on or off you can do all these kind of stuff so i'm going to say this is going to be a rounder uh, sorry just a rectangular and then the color i'm going to change this to red color so when i move the um, label it's going to change the color so that's how it's going to be so i'm going to click ok and then finally the summary so it's pretty much a, a condensed item of all these items if you just go scroll down you can find all the items that you have filled in so far okay click ok click ok and then click ok and there we go so we have customized the label and you can select the label and then you can use a grip to move it and you see as soon as i move it it changes the color that's the drag state which comes into place so i can select it i can click on uh, reset and then it goes back to original so that is how you customize uh, your label and the same way you can customize your uh, minor stations as well it's exactly the same thing and you can also adjust the um, let's say if i select it if i go to the label group you can adjust the increment values as well let's say i want it every um, every 30 meters and uh, hit apply hit ok and this is going to be at every 30 meters the major stations okay so it's much easier uh, you doing this way um so that's that's about it guys and um so we will do more and more little tricks as we find some time so if you have any questions let me know uh, if you like the videos just subscribe and uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, we'll catch up again thanks guys